Editor's note, Scout Tafoya's latest edition of The Unloved might be my favorite installment to date, and not just because it breaks from the usual format and considers two films rather than concentrating on just one. It is an exercise in discovery, challenging conventional wisdom in the gentlest way. I like both Heaven's Gate and The Lone Ranger more than most critics, the last one notoriously more, follow the link and see. Plus, I tend to like westerns, or at least find them interesting, even if parts of them don't work, because they're so rare these days, and for various reasons so demanding. But I'd never considered the similarities that the two films share until I watched Scout's video. There are a lot. And I mean a lot. On a superficial level, both movies represented huge financial and artistic gambles. The commercial climate for westerns was only slightly more hospitable in 1981, when Heaven's Gate came out, than in 2013, when director Gore Verbinski tried to revive The Legend of the Masked Man. Both directors broke the bank making films audiences found confusing, irritating, or tedious. Heaven's Gate was written off by critics and the handful of viewers who saw it as, as an overlong, pompous, politically and dramatically incoherent example of 70s auteurism at its most indulgent. Its commercial failure nearly destroyed its studio. The Lone Ranger was wrapped for its drastic tonal shifts and for casting Verbinski regular Johnny Depp, whose claims of Native American ancestry have been disputed, as the Lone Ranger's friend and mentor, Tonto. But I always thought there was substance to the admittedly grandiose gestures of Semino's epic. I fell in love with, some might say fell for, the Lone Ranger, as well. Even as a pre-film literate middle schooler, I was fascinated by, Heaven's Gate, because it didn't look, feel, or move like any western I'd seen. It was long and slow and intensely physical, Chimino notoriously built entire towns with functioning interiors and exteriors, an indulgence that would be permitted again until HBO bankrolled, Deadwood. Also notable, the film was largely devoid of traditional gunfighter movie cliches. It told the story of 